Hello, and welcome to today's yeah. Lunch and Learn, which is a continuation of our Small Food Business 101 today on Kitchen Sharing Basics. So thank you all for joining. Very excited to see our group today. Feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. We would love to hear who's in the room. Um, and so I... Uh, I am our presenter today, Caroline Howe. Apologies that my name is saying something else, but I am indeed Caroline Howe. And I am joined here by many members of the Innovation and Equitable Development team at DSLBD. So I would love to pass to my colleagues for some quick introductions. So first I will pass to Kate. Caroline, thank you so much, and I hope everyone can hear me. My name is Kate Marion. I'm the program manager for the Innovation and Equitable Development Division at DSLBD um, with some of the staff that you're going to be hearing from today. I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to another one of my colleagues. I'll, I'll let somebody volunteer if they're able to come off of mute. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shannon Taylor, also a member of the NOED team, um, specifically uh, coordinating and managing the Made in DC program. Thank you, thank you all so much for joining the session today, um, and I will definitely stick around to support Caroline and the team in the chat. Thank you so much, Shannon. I. Hi, quickly, I'm Camille Nixon, Project and Capital Access Manager. I help with all things capital and also helping with any aspect of your business development. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Camille. So, and Cynthia, I don't know if you are unable to unmute yourself. Well, we are also joined by our colleague, Cynthia. So thank you to the entire Innovation and Equitable Development team um, that is joining us today. And as a reminder, this is part of a DSLBD food day, and we are thrilled to have a number of events happening today to celebrate food business. So while we've had food businesses coming throughout the MLK library today, for technical assistance. You can always join us for technical assistance any Wednesday. Um, there will be a link in the chat for you to register for a future Wednesday to join us here or for virtual technical assistance, uh, which can um, you are welcome to join us for virtual technical assistance um, with each member of colleagues with our different um, specialties and expertise. So today, again, we are focused on sharing kitchen space. Um, so very excited to see some folks here who are interested in sharing their kitchen space. Lee, thanks for the introduction. Others, again, we would love to hear what brings you here today um, so that we can shape um, this. But today, what we are going to be covering throughout this presentation is why share? What's the purpose of sharing a kitchen and kitchen space? Different types of kitchen sharing that we see in the district and some of the terminology that's used in the space of kitchen sharing. Considerations if you are going to be a kitchen host and then tips for food entrepreneurs when you are looking for a space to share. So we'll dive right in. Feel free to drop your questions in the chat. As you know, I have fantastic colleagues on the call who will answer your questions in the chat if possible or flag for the end. Um, and you can always reach us at inno.ed at dc.gov with more questions. I know many of you will likely be watching this in a recording format, so you can drop your questions to inno.ed at dc.gov. So, why share your space? So we are going to be talking specifically about kitchen space, but of course, sharing your kitchen is sharing your space. So we'll talk about some of the broader elements of that. So why share your space? Many people are interested in kitchen space sharing because rent is so high in the district, but spoiler alert, it is about more than money. So sharing your kitchen space, of course, can support, um, provide support and collaboration for your business growth. So whether you are an existing restaurant, cafe, uh, supermarket, deli, grocery that has a kitchen space, or you are an entrepreneur looking for a shared kitchen space, sharing space can support your business growth. 
It also can be shared promotion for your business. So instead, there's two businesses that are doing great promotion um, and that are building their own followers, both uh, literally customer base who is very interested in purchasing, but also social media and other forms of, of followers. So increased interest for existing businesses, existing spaces, existing restaurants, as well as capitalizing on the existing base of a kitchen space for that new business. It can provide complementary goods to your customers. We'll talk a lot about why it is so beneficial for a business that is perhaps selling alcohol or coffee or one particular type of baked good to have another business that's providing a complementary set of products. Your customers will then be able to get more of what they need in one location without you needing to learn how to become an expert baker or a fabulous barista. It can significantly reduce costs, not only for space. We know rents are increasing in the district. We know sharing rent has led to enormous numbers of house sharing in the district, but also space sharing. So, but also shared costs of equipment, shared costs of security, and shared costs of maintenance. So when you think about equipment that you might be using or considering investing in, you will not be using that equipment likely 24 hours a day. And sharing that equipment can really reduce the initial investment, but also the cost of maintenance. There's also the possibility, which we are very excited about, about the possibility of potentially sharing inputs or aggregating purchasing. So as every food business knows, many of your big expenses are, um, are inputs such as packaging or even the raw goods for your the ingredients for your um, for your cooking, as well as things like security that may be need to be shared and, and again, reducing those costs. And also when you're purchasing more, whether that is PPE or flour uh, or fresh produce, you can get much better prices when you're buying more of it. So that aggregating purchasing that can happen when more people are sharing the kitchen space. So all of these are benefits for both sides in a kitchen sharing arrangement, the kitchen owner, manager, or anchor tenant, and those new food businesses joining. I also want to say that as a part of all of this, there is also an element about building community, about supporting entrepreneurs. So for those of you who particularly some businesses on the call who already run spaces really committed to community service, community bringing together of community, of course, helping support new businesses is an incredible way to do that. So oh, we're going to talk through some of the big kitchen spaces and, and kitchen sharing in the district. And, um, and then we'll talk through all the different ways that that sharing shows up. Um, and before I dive into that, I do want to reiterate some of what is coming in in the chat, just in case people are calling in, which is that um, this is being recorded. Both the slides and the recording will be made available to all registrants for today's session. So the big three kitchen sharing spaces in the district, um, all of whom are specifically designed to be shared kitchen, shared commercial kitchen space. And I wanted to start with these big three because they are an incredibly important part of the ecosystem in the district. And they're also a real example of what's possible when you are explicitly focused on sharing kitchens. So Tastemakers, based in, in Brooklyn, um, it is a incubator kitchen, it is a shared commercial kitchen, it is a food hall, and it is an event space. So there are anchor tenants, businesses who are always uh, available and are available during their working hours to be purchased from. And then in the back, there's shared kitchen space where many dozens of businesses use space either a couple of days a month to many hours every single day and different membership types, types based on that. They are also an incubator kitchen, which means that they are helping small businesses grow. So in addition to providing commercial kitchen space, they are providing those incubator resources to help businesses grow to the next level. 
as you can see in this photo, they're also an event space. And so that's something to think about on both sides, how events held in a shared kitchen space can again be really benefiting everyone involved. Each business is being drawn, uh, each business that is drawing customers is getting that benefit of other customers that might be interested in one of their products. Mess hall, which again, this is mess hall's event space. It's also a teaching kitchen so that any business space there can use this for private events um, or for classes that they're teaching, um, whether that is a cocktail class using a cocktail syrup, which I've attended at mess hall, or an empanada uh, uh, producer showing how to, um, how to make empanadas, or simply having an event where you can taste a number of products at the same time. So Mess Hall, again, shared kitchen space, but also runs a launch, their launch pad program, which is a competitive incubator and also hosts private events. So you can, um, and again, having uh, events from the businesses that are based there. So those trainings and classes. Um, and, and so I think it's important to recognize the difference between a shared commission commercial kitchen space, and then this added service of an incubator, really helping that business grow and an event space. Um, so it happens that these two both combine all three of those elements, an actual shared commercial kitchen, an event space, and an incubator. So Mess Hall's community incubator um, that, uh, again, they emphasize the fact that as a food community, members are learning from each other, collaborating, and that as a culinary incubator, they really are providing support and resources for businesses to move through the food business pipeline from being an idea to your first test to then scaling up production. And then certainly not least um, is Union Kitchen. Last but not least, um, Union Kitchen is an accelerator. So again, in the entrepreneurship world, a slight difference, which is that accelerator really trying to see that business grow and scale. And Union Kitchen has a real track record of helping businesses scale to that national distribution. So um, helping in manufacturing, in packaging, as you can see some examples from their website, um, really building that really strong packaging. Um, and of course the kitchen space is a part of it. A real distinction is that Union Kitchen as an accelerator is also taking equity in the businesses. So they are co-owners of, of those businesses. And that is a real part in seeing them grow to this national scale. Um, there's a real focus on, because of that, a real focus on, as you can see, what we call community uh, um, consumer packaged goods. So all of these are goods that could be sold in a supermarket or a grocery or um, union, um, union grocery, uh, where you can actually pick up any of these um, packaged foods. So it is quite different um, from both of the other two, which can also serve as catering kitchens for a, a catering business, which catering business is typically not looking at um, growing your catering business to be national, really looking at serving um, local events um, with your catering. So those are the big three um, shared kitchens in the district, but they are certainly not the only idea of thinking about what a shared kitchen can look like. Again, we saw in each of those a back shared kitchen within an event space. A food hall sort of pivots that where while the kitchens themselves are not shared, the event space very much is. So quickly running through this because I think it's important to recognize when we're talking about sharing commercial kitchen space, the kitchen is so important for our food businesses, but the event space, the, that shared space can be such a huge part of the cost of running a business. And so sharing that can be very beneficial. So this is a picture of La Cosecha, a very close to Union Market, which of course Union Market, one of our flagship food halls in the district, La Cosecha with a focus on uh, Latinx food. Um, and then of course, a place like Eastern Market, which has a little bit of that element shared space, shared food business space, while aggregating some of those other services together. So I wanted to separate that. 
Um, and then in Georgetown, the South Block, Gray Street, and Sundevich shared space, which again, share space for seating with each having very small individual kitchens. Why is this important to share in an event about a shared kitchen? Is that actually um, you can really break down the needs of a kitchen space when you're sharing the other elements. There's also a number of recent wins in the district that I wanted to highlight, um, and this will also help us understand the difference um, of, of what we're hoping to see more of from a DSLBD and district government perspective in terms of looking at new businesses that could be co-locating with existing businesses. So Social Beast started in 2020 as a true ghost a ghost kitchen is where there is no seating. There is, it is exclusively takeout and delivery of those, of, of that food. Um, and so Social Beast began as Ghost Line in 2020 and was a, a designed to be a shared ghost kitchen. So where many food concepts, many different businesses were operating out of the same kitchen, all doing takeout and delivery. As the world reopened post COVID, they pivoted to social beast and social beast itself has pizza, has cocktails and is the anchor tenant of this space. But as you can see from the homepage of their website, featuring Mijitas Tex-Mex, a separate food business that serves Tex-Mex food um, that is available for order at Social Beast or again for takeout, operating a little bit as a hybrid of a ghost kitchen and a collaborating business. So for Social Beast, Mijita is currently is a long-term co-tenant, but you could envision a similar concept as what happens at Eats Place or others, where it is a rotating pop-up. So Social Beast is open to the possibility of other um, kitchens coming in, other established food businesses coming in, whether that is to operate a true ghost kitchen or whether that is to be serving their food alongside. Um, there's been a lot of publicity. This is from um, Washington City Paper about Espita Mezcaleria and Ghost Burger. Classic example of a ghost kitchen, Espita Mezcaleria sells mezcal cocktails, but it also sells um, typical and fabulous Mexican food. Ghost Burger operates out of the same kitchen exclusively for takeout and delivery with a very different but complementary food. So the ghost burger, um, again, making burgers quite different, um, but available for that takeout and delivery, but operating out of that same shared kitchen. Um, and as you can see in this text from Washington City paper, um, that um, uh, ghost kitchens really, again, typically means takeout only concepts. Although, again, these words are evolving as we experiment, we as a food community experiment more with shared kitchens. There's also been an increasing number of, um, of bar kitchens that are being shared. So some examples and ways of sharing bar kitchens um, is that we're starting to see interest from more bars in inviting another chef in, another food concept, another food business to manage the bar food so that the bar um, and that again, the bar as the anchor tenant, really focusing on their cocktails um, in the case of a cafe, really focusing on their coffee and having that other chef come in and manage the bar food. Um, we also, the possibility of alternating times so that bars we see, um, excuse me, sorry, that when one chef is coming in to manage bar food, they may also be running their own catering, their own takeout um, that could really be focused on the food rather than the, the alcohol or be other beverages. There's also the idea of sharing space from a temporal perspective of using um, a bar uh, uh, as a cafe and bakery in the morning. So you're really staggering those timings. Or since many bars are very busy on the weekends and closed on Mondays, using that kitchen on days those bars are closed. So wanted to highlight this because um, we do have such a fabulous bar scene in the district and they are a real possibility for that kitchen space sharing. No matter how small your kitchen, if you operate a bar, there is a real possibility of, um, of, of figuring out how you can share that kitchen in other times. So now what to consider when you're thinking about sharing. All this might sound good, um, but space is used for such different 
purposes. And so it is important. We've did done a couple of whole sessions in our in our food business one on one on a, picking a license and picking a location. And every time I've shared this, because it's so important to me to really tease out the many different ways we use space, whether that is potentially growing some of your products or your produce, making the products, actually cooking, preparing, reheating and assembling products. Sometimes your space is only used uh, to fry frozen um, french fries as part of your bar food, or perhaps you're just assembling sandwiches on a, uh, that are from already prepared meals. I um, mean, uh, of course, often are selling products in your space, although for many businesses, they are really just looking for a kitchen to be making their food in because they are prepared to sell products at farmers markets. They are prepared to promote their businesses in other places. Um, and sometimes they are really just looking at a um, they they are really just looking for a, a kitchen um, to be training their team in. Um, and so that is another possibility for you to share your kitchen space um, in a different way. Of course, there's also questions of storage, of meeting customers and promoting your business. So when you're thinking about sharing, it is really important to think about which pieces of these are you already doing in your space for your food business? And which, what are you looking for in a space? If you are a food entrepreneur looking for a space, what are you looking to do in your space? What is essential to you? And what are you willing to share? What are you willing um, to collaborate on? And what may you need to find a, a different separate space for? So again, some of these shared kitchens, you might not be able to sell products out of, and you need to find those other outlets for sale, whether that is retail or whether that is a farmer's market or another direct to consumer. Again, many ghost kitchens exist because takeout and delivery is a way to you know, eliminate that meeting customers and promoting your business. You're doing that online. You are really just producing your products there. Um, so um, considerations for kitchen hosts. I can tell already, and again, would love if you introduce yourself in the chat um, so that I can get a better sense of who's in the room, but I know we have some kitchen hosts in the room. So um, from a logistical perspective, um, questions of um, how are you actually going to share the space? Um, where is storage? Be equipment, um, what equipment are you willing to share? What equipment are you not willing to share? And how are you going to secure it in the off times if needed? Access, what is access going to look like? That's been a real barrier for many food businesses um, that perhaps are, um, are looking to share a kitchen space with a school um, that typically only operates in certain hours. Is there access in those off hours to really be capitalizing on that kitchen space? Timing, what timing is simply too busy in your existing kitchen um, to have somebody else in the space? We have food businesses who are looking at literally every hour of the day. There are bakers who are looking to be producing between 4 and 6 a.m. There are caterers who are looking to just be making food in the evenings. Um, there are um, produce processors who are open to any time of day or night um, that they can have access to a commercial kitchen. So regardless of your time constraints, know that there are kitchens that are interested in sharing that. How will you manage scheduling, um, particularly for something like a caterer who will only need space when a gig comes up? It's important to think about how you're going to handle that scheduling. There are incredible resources, which we will send in our follow-up email from the Institute of Justice in really digging into each one of these um, in terms of how you can think about it as a kitchen host. It's important to know that DC Health will inspect for each business um, and each business that's cooking in a kitchen needs a plan for their food safety and for storage. That might be a HACCP plan, so a hazard um, control and management plan, um, and it may just need, uh, DC Health may need to know what's going into each uh, product that they're making, and so really seeing that plan for food safety and food storage, and so it is important to know that there will be a DC Health inspection for each new food business. Finances. We know it's great to share the cost of space. It's really important for kitchen hosts to account for additional costs of insurance, maintenance, storage, and security. It may be very easy to say, well, the cost of utilities are just 
$10 an hour, so that's all I'm going to charge. But remember that it's important to account for the additional use of your equipment, of your floors, of your cabinets, everything like that, that may require some additional maintenance. And that's something that really can be shared and communicated on both sides to see what is reasonable to account for. Um, for example, if, uh, if Similarly, if a food business is coming into your kitchen with specialized equipment, is that equipment that you can benefit from um, while they have already paid for that upfront cost? Is there additional equipment that they need that you might need to purchase? That kind of thing. And then very importantly, alignment. What is actually going to bring the most to your clients? Are there particular offerings that can really be more than the sum of their parts, more than just your kitchen plus this new concept that can really be offering your clients and customers something to the next level? If you're interested in talking through these, um, please do set up a technical assistance session with us. Um, you can, I know that that's been posted in the chat on how to schedule that. Considerations for entrepreneurs. Do you, um, uh, from a customers and employees perspective, do you need to meet customers and employees in person? Um, so from a customer's perspective, often we feel like we want to be selling to our customers in the same space we are cooking. However, sometimes given the rise of online, the desire for takeout and delivery, you don't actually need to meet your customers in your space. So sharing a kitchen space um, that is, uh, so sharing a kitchen space that is simply just for preparing your food is still worth considering. Uh, then really think about your kitchen needs. What do you actually need in your kitchen space? Uh, for some businesses, genuinely, they are just mixing dry spices, but they need to do that in a commercial kitchen. So they don't need any storage, any equipment. They just need a commercial kitchen. For others, you may need significant amounts of dry storage, cold storage, cool storage, and really thinking through that to be specific so that you are not in a position of lugging things back and forth if you don't need to be. Now, licensing and insurance. Many businesses, this is so individual to the partnership of an entrepreneur and a kitchen host. So some kitchen hosts genuinely want to provide an umbrella and have different, incubate different ideas, bring in a host chef just to be cooking for a week um, and see how that can help their business. And they might actually be operating under your business. But for the most part, we are talking about differently independently licensed businesses that are sharing spice. So if you are an entrepreneur entering a spice, a space that does have a business license, you still need your own license. You will likely still need your own insurance. And really think about what you need now and what you need later. Think about your pricing plans. I know we're coming to our end of our time. Um, so I just want to reiterate that there's so many different ways to think about pricing. And there's also ways to think about bartering. So some kitchens are not able to accept cash payments for the use of their space, but you might actually be able to structure again something that's really aligned where the new food entrepreneur is offering training to your customers or your clients. So I really encourage you to think creatively about um, I'm going to skip through these last pieces. If you do have questions about um, the food business license piece, I encourage you to schedule one of these um, sessions with us. But again, if you are a kitchen host, it is important for you to, uh, you are not responsible for another business getting their license, but you do want to make sure that any business that's entering your space that is using your kitchen, your address, your certificate of occupancy, that they are in good standing and that they are also a licensed business. So um, I want to reiterate that you've got help in this. Um, we've shared resources for you to follow up with the DSLBD InnoEd team, um, one on one um, technical assistance, um, but there's also DCRA, Small Business Resource Center, the DC Bar Pro Bono Center, which offers one on one TA and workshops. So if you're working out an MOU um, or a contract, it's great to follow up with them. The Women's Business Center, Howard Small Business Development Center, Washington, DC Economic Partnership, and then our partners who are here in the MLK Library with us today, the Latino Economic Development Center, Eats Place, Wake If, other CDFIs. 
So I am so excited. This again, this recording will be posted online. Um, we are just scratching the surface, but I wanted to cover a lot of kitchen sharing basics, the kinds of terms we use, different ideas on how to structure them. All in advance of tonight's kitchen matchmaking event, I've seen some um, activity in the chat. Uh, I know that not everyone will be able to make the event. We are going to be doing more email connections and those email matchmaking, and I certainly hope to have a future matchmaking event as well. But I hope to see some of you this evening at 4 p.m. at the MLK Library, where we will be having a matchmaking event connecting some kitchen hosts and some uh, food entrepreneurs. So thank you all for your time and thank you for my colleagues for the support today. And thank you to all of you for all that you do to help keep our city fed and fun. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Caroline, thank you so much. I, I don't know if you were able to stop the recording. Um, I am no longer the host. So if anyone is able to stop the recording, I know we had one quick question in the chat, Caroline, that I'll.